Welcome to Soul Searching Hour. Today we are talking about dreams. What is a dream? Sometimes we wake up from a dream and your heart is beating, you're sweating. What happens when we dream? They say that we forget 95% of our dreams. Today I'm joined by Dr. Bafo Jan, who's gonna to explain to us what dreaming is all about. The question of why we dream has fascinated many philosophers and scientists for thousands of years. While such remain uncertain about dreaming, today on Soul Searching Hour, Dr. Boafour Jan gives a deeper insight about the purpose of dreams and why we dream. Stay tuned on Soul Searching Hour. Doc, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? By grace, I'm doing good. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Sometimes when we sleep, I don't know whether this has ever happened to you, but I know from my personal experience that sometimes I dream and I get stiff. Mm. It's like I want to move, but I can't move. Mm. Sometimes you wake up from a dream and you're sweating. Yeah. Sometimes you feel like you're fighting with somebody. Mm. Or sometimes you have a dream and that person calls you the next day. What is it about having dreams and what is a dream? In a dream, we assess what is in the subconscious. And the subconscious is in levels. When you enter the subconscious, we have the early stages. We have deeper stages. And uh, it depends, your dreaming depends on uh, how far you assessed, how far you went okay. in the subconscious. Because it says that sometimes you're almost paralyzed when you're sleeping, mm. right? Yeah. So what are the stages? Because some people are light sleepers, some people are deep sleepers. I know that as soon as you open the door, I'm up because mm. I can hear it. And some people, you can wake them and wake them and wake them, but they won't wake up. When you enter into sleep, the brain waves move from one to the other okay. and we have the early stages and then we have the intermediate the in between and then we have a deeper sleep so when you stay within the early stages your experiences are different okay. from someone who has gone into the intermediate section and then one who proceeds further. Due to certain factors, we just uh, remain in the early stages throughout the whole dream. Okay. Sometimes too, we go deeper. Some people predominantly, they keep within the first stage. Okay. Uh, some too go all the way. There are certain factors. For example, if you eat heavy before you go to sleep, then as you withdraw, um, a greater portion of your energy remains behind to take care of digestion. So you can't go far. Okay. You're just uh, um, at the early stages. Okay. And there you can have a lot of um, nightmares okay. uh, because you are moving with uh, very little energy. Uh, a greater part of the energy remains behind in the body to take care of digestion. Okay. So your sleep is still close to the wakeful state. Yeah. And does it matter the position that you sleep in? Say you sleep on your back or you sleep on your front. Does that change the type of dreams that you have? If you, you, you are not a deep sleeper, when you sleep and you are just at the early stages, of sleep, of uh, subconsciousness, then you are close to what is happening in the body. So sometimes we can see this, um, it might have happened to almost everyone. Sometimes, especially when we were kids, you may dream you are uh, urinating mm. and before you realize you have urinated on your bed. Yeah. So the feeling in the body and uh, the movement away from that state is not is so close that you still feel what is going on in the body, okay. partially at okay. least. 
when you sleep on your back, are you more likely to have nightmares? Because somebody says that, you know, if you sleep on your back like this, you're more likely to have nightmares. Is that true? That is partially true. Let me tell you why. You see, um, circulation goes on even when we sleep. And uh, when you lie at, in a certain position, you block the flow of blood at that side. And uh, the nerves, everything is uh, blocked in a way. So sometimes, because of the closeness of the subconscious to the conscious, you still feel something is going on with the body. And you, call, you say it's happening to you because your consciousness is divided. A portion is in the body, a portion is out of the body. So what is happening in the body is felt by you, the portion which is out. And uh, it makes you feel like something is happening to that side. You know, sometimes uh, what we call muntum, you see, you feel someone is holding you, but actually it's a circulation problem, okay. <laughs> you know. Okay. You see? So our back, um, when we lie there, the spine is a very special, um, let me call it, uh, part of us, because it's like a high tension wire, you see, connecting the brain to the rest of the body. So uh, this uh, side, when uh, we impede the flow of blood and other energies there, then uh, um, we are going to affect a whole lot of functions. Uh, metabolism, mm -hmm. whatever, gets uh, slowed down because this spine is a, is a very special uh, organ if I may call it, mm. and uh, we need to let it function at its best. Okay. So would you say sleeping on your side or sleeping on your stomach would be a better position to sleep in? Well, um, it depends. See, either way, there will be some blockage. Okay. Because if you lie on your belly, you block the flow of blood in there. But if um, you lie in that position um, on empty stomach, then there isn't so much need of blood for digestion. Okay. So if you have blocked it, well, no problem. But if you have so much food there, that needs to be digested. Digestion needs blood. And if you lie on your stomach like that, you block the circulation there. So indigestion and other complex things can happen. And how many hours of sleep are we supposed to actually have as human beings? Um, because I know for me, I'm a bad sleeper. I can do three to four hours and then that's it. Some people need maybe eight hours. What is the right amount of hours that we need to sleep? Yes, sleep is meant to relax us because everything in the creation is based on the principle of polarity. So when there is activity, there must be rest to balance it. When there is day, there must be night. So um, the day is uh, equated to activity and the night is equated to rest. That is nature's pattern, you see. So um, the need for rest uh, changes due to the type of activity we do okay. and it keeps changing. Today you are inactive, tomorrow you are very active. So when you are very active, then you need more rest to balance it. It's just like a pendulum. When the pendulum goes one side, if it goes too far, when it returns, it goes too far. Mm. If it goes a little, it returns a little. So if you uh, during the daytime, you are relaxed. Let's say you are doing mental activity, you are not uh, doing any physical activity, you are not spending energy. Then uh, you don't need too much rest because uh, after all, the pendulum went only a small direction. So when you come here, just a little rest. But if you do so much work, then you have pulled the pendulum far. So here too, it must go far. You need more rest. Okay. 
You see, if you don't balance it, you have what we call sleep debt, or let me say imbalance in your system. And it is the root cause of many, many weaknesses in, the, in a person's life. Okay. You see? For example? For example, we are, um, when we are baby, the metabolism, there is the creative side and the destructive side. And when we are babies, the uh, creative side is on the ascendancy. And uh, destructive is very little. But as we grow, the destructive is catching up with the constructive. Mm. And by the age of 49, 50, it comes to a balance. And after that, the destructive uh, goes in ascendancy. It passes the uh, constructive. Okay. But if a person is not having the right uh, lifestyle, this happens very early. That means the destructive catches up with the constructive very early. But if you know the signs of uh, balancing things or living a good lifestyle, you may even past 50 and the destructive force is still down okay. and the constructive is high, okay. you see. So weaknesses are catching people up at early age and uh, this is what is causing it, okay. you see. So imbalances within uh, activity and rest, they are, they are causing a whole lot. Do you think that lack of sleep yeah. can cause mental health? Yes, very much. Um, you see, everything in this system is functioning like, like being programmed to function in some way. So uh, if it conforms with the programming, original programming, then there isn't much problem. But when the lifestyle is not uh, in line with uh, the original programming, unnatural lifestyle, then surely it affects the cells, the body cells, especially the cells which are made to function um, the whole of our lives. For example, the heart is beating since the time we were in the womb. Yeah. And it goes on and on till we have to drop. So the brain is also, at a certain stage, the brain picks activity and it's non-stop. It goes on and on, on and on. Even when we shift into the subconscious in a sleep, a portion of the energy remains behind and it follows the activity we are doing. So the brain is active uh, even that time. Wow. You see, um, the brain waves are moving even the time we are sleeping. Wow. So the brain is uh, working, 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 working. Therefore, we need to let it have the required energy to function. Uh, whatever it needs to function must be given. And at the same time, um, the principle of activity and rest must be there. So the brain needs to also rest. You see, when somebody uh, that's activity, there is something we say, activity in inaction, mm -hmm. and inaction in activity. So the person reaches a point where when he's doing activity, he's so relaxed inside that the activity doesn't take off so much energy. But when activity is uh, combined with stress, combined with anxiety and all that, then it takes so much energy from you, you see? Then you need more rest. And if you don't do it, the brain will complain. Everything complains that we are fed up, we are tired. <laughs> and sometimes that is what leads to depression mm. and uh, uh, schizophrenia and mm. all those kind of things, mm. you see? So for those that can't sleep is it good to take medications to help you sleep or is it good to do an activity like I don't know go to the gym or have a run or 
drink a little bit of alcohol to try and get you to sleep. What, what can you do to try and get some good sleep? Sleep, good. That's a good question. Actually, um, we don't need uh, medicines to sleep. Um, when we are doing it, we are doing some harm to the body. And uh, already the body is uh, tired. It has gone into activity so much. It needs a rest. But then, that rest must be through a natural process, not a forced process. Okay. You see, so medication forces things. In other words, it just dulls the nerves, it dulls the senses, and it forces everything to come to a stop, so you sleep. But that is not a good thing, because it's taking you out of the natural pattern of the body. It just forces things on you, so that is not natural. When you continue like that, then you live on natural uh, lifestyle. You see, the natural lifestyle is there so that you can actually have very good sleep. See, when you can't sleep and you want to have a very good sleep, uh, in the first place, one has to see whether the lack of sleep is due to too much energy being activated in the body. For example, sometimes uh, when you have fear of something, then the hormones will put, uh, 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 the glands will put some hormones in the body activating you and you are awake all the night, you see. So if it is like that, we have techniques to calm the hormones. See, there are techniques to calm the hormones and uh, there are other causes. If you eat too much acid food, acidity, we drink our water is acidic, food causing acidity. But our Asian people, they were not falling sick because even the water they used to drink was alkaline. The water that comes from the spring water that comes from the soil, it's always alkaline. From the mountainside, it comes flowing down and it is alkaline. But now the processes we take things through, it makes all the water acidic. So if your system is acidic, uh, hard, hardly you can fall, you can sleep well, no. Because it's a natural thing going on in the body, you see. So uh, sometimes we need to know the cause for your lack of sleep. It may be acidity. Um, it may be uh, over excite excitement mm -hmm. about something. And when it is like that, there is a technique you do. You see, the breath is connected with the mind. Mm -hmm. And they are just like uh, twins. They move together. So when you are overexcited or you are in anxiety or you are in fear and you cannot sleep, you are thinking, thinking, just uh, come back to the mind, to the breath. There, is, there are techniques of the breath. You see, I just explained the pendulum going this way and this way. The same way the breath, it goes in and out, in, out. What you are seeking is for the breath to come to the central point where it moves very little, not so much. So anything which is making your breath move so much, <laughs> like anger, yeah. fear, and so on, they are all disturbing your system. But when you can bring it to the balance point where the movement of the breath is so silent, then you, you can pass on to sleep, you see. So we have techniques you do and you bring the breath very close to each other. It moves here left, here very little, there little. And uh, in the long run, it stabilizes in the middle and you are gone, okay. you see. Can we try the technique? Oh. <laughs> Let's try the technique. So what do we do? 
Because I'm a bad sleeper, I can't sleep. You can't sleep? No. <laughs> I have about four hours sleep a day. Okay. So what type of technique do we do? Yes. You see, when you want to do that technique, mm -hmm. you ensure something. Okay. What do you ensure is that uh, you are oxygenated well. Okay. Because whenever you are in fear, anger and the rest, you lose so much oxygen very fast and replace it. So you do deep breathing to replace it before you now come back to the calming of the breath. Always when you want to do such exercise, ensure that your spine is straight. Because the spine, it conducts high energy to come down just like the, uh, uh, the high tension wire, like I was saying. So um, if it is straight, then it does the work better. It carries the energy through the whole system. Now, as you uh, breathe in deep, mm -hmm. just for the sake of oxygen, yeah. if you want to oxygenate the blood very well, you can do rapid breathing. Okay. And it should be strong breathing. So like, Um, if you have done operation, then I'll give you a different technique. And how many times are you supposed to do that? It also depends on how depleted you are of oxygen. Okay. 20 times okay. as a beginner. Then sometimes you increase it to 30, 40, 50 or more. And uh, all the time uh, the storage will, will, uh, will show. Uh, you start to feel the energy coming through your brain. Wow. Because when the blood is oxygenated, it's distributed. And when the brain receives it, you start to feel it. Start to feel it. You see, so when it, uh, it can be felt like that, it means you have had enough. <laughs> that time, if you are standing, you may fall. Okay. Because so when the brain gets it, you see, the brain cells have been famished. They have been denied the, blood, the oxygen. So when they get it, they scramble for it. Okay. And then you start to feel dizzy. Uh, uh, when you do that, after, uh, now you have enough, enough oxygen. oxygen. Mm -hmm. It is now that you are going to start to relax. Okay. And in order to relax, it becomes easier because you have been oxygenated the prompting in your body to breathe uh, long is no more necessary. The body will not prompt you yeah. to breathe fast anymore. So when you relax, put your attention in, on the breath. Okay. Imagine you are a baby in the mother's womb mm -hmm. and there there is no breathing going on. You are in the center. You see? So you close your eyes whilst doing that? As a beginner, you may need to close because of distractions. Mm. But when you advance, whether the eyes are open or closed, doesn't matter. Okay. You see? So the idea is, as a baby in the womb, your mother is providing you with the blood, everything so you don't need to breathe in to uh, to get oxygen if your mother has oxygen you have it so you relax so babies are not breathing in the but in the womb you see so you are becoming like a baby and before you realize the breath is stopping slowing down slowing down slowing down before you realize you are gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try I'm gonna try this technique. I'm actually gonna try that and see whether it works for me. But I'm sure it will work. It, it will sounds work. very natural. Yeah. It's a natural way to do yeah. it. Now back to our dreams, right? Just before that uh -huh. you see there are other ways to do 
uh, the relaxation. Okay. Because for some people, they may not be able to do this. Maybe somebody sick, or like I was saying, you are having uh, operation yeah. or something. When it's like that, um, you generate circulation through, sometimes you use uh, hot water, cold water, one foot in cold, one foot in hot, oh. for a few minutes, let's say two minutes, then you change. When you do that, it begins to, because of the difference in uh, temperature, then it generates circulation, wow. you see. Because some people cannot do exercise, whatever. Um, either old age or sickness or something. So mm -hmm. when they do that, then circulation uh, improves. See? And um, for you to uh, let the breath come naturally, sometimes you just, instead of that method, <laughs> you know, you can just uh, take the foot, mm -hmm use dry sponge okay. and you do like that you rub okay. inside for some time then you do for here the nerves um, get uh, electrified you know <laughs> they get uh, so they send energy to the upper side and before you realize you are breathing wow. <laughs> you're breathing and uh, in this way, um, it also helps for you to have a good sleep. Okay. There are many other techniques, but uh, okay. let's put that one there. Yeah. They say that we forget 95% of our dreams when yeah. we sleep. Yeah. Why is that? When you shift in consciousness from the conscious state to the subconscious state, the period you are shifting, whatever was going on in the body, if everything remains the same, when you come back, you will still have the memory of what has happened. But most of the time, when people come back, sometimes the temperature of the body has changed so much. And you are uh, coming inside it, then the, let me use the word, the spirit changes focus because it always wants balance. So if the temperature has dropped so much in the body, it changes focus to see what to do to let it come back to normal. And this is happening at a, a, a subtle stage. So when it changes focus, it loses all that it has come with. You see, if the temperature has raised, it has gone high, then it wants to see how to bring it back to normal. But this is happening at a sub section but it affects the memory of the dream if one comes back and the temperature is the same and nothing uh, is going on th that catches attention then it just comes with what memories it has you see so um, always even things like digestion if you uh, overeat before sleeping, sometimes people eat, they leave some for the last minute. So when it's about to lie down, then he eats. All that is not good. Because when your spirit moves into the subconscious state to assess things there, it's coming back. Uh, it leaves so, so much of energy behind to do the digestion. But uh, the process generates a whole lot of things. You see, digestion is a process, we call it slow combustion. So heat, was, heat is generated to make the chemical changes go on. Uh, in school, we know in chemistry, uh, heat helps things to move on. So it generates so much heat, so when the uh, the consciousness comes back, then it realizes this is not like the body I left, it's something else, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So what do I do with it? And how do I make it normal, you see? But that is not on the conscious level. It happens at the subconscious level. Mm -hmm. But 
the dream itself happens at a subconscious level and the change of focus is also subconscious level. So he leaves everything he has uh, assessed. You see, it's just like you are from room A, you move into room B, immediately what is going on in room B occupies your attention. And that time you are not able to think of room, room A anymore, you see. But if nothing is happening in room B that you have come to, you can bring your memory of what is going on in room A with you. Okay. But the moment you enter room B and something is going on there, uh, that occupies you, you see. So it is a problem in the body okay. that uh, normally causes the forgetfulness. So are dreams supernatural? Some people have sleepwalking whilst they're dreaming. Some people are having dreams that they're being killed. Some people are having dreams that their family members, are they real? I've always talked about polarity. So we have the source polarity, source pole, that is one pole. That is what uh, people call God. And then the polarity of that, that is the finite, the infinite, you see, so it's a polarity. And the infinite is uh, aware of all things, even things that will happen, things that has happened, everything. But when you come to this other pole, you know nothing. So it's like you are trying to know, you see. Uh, so in... Uh, our dreams, uh, people put so much value on dreams. Why? Because a whole lot of things that manifest on the physical plane, um, it actually uh, exists in the subconscious and it shifts gradually into the conscious state, the physical state. So things which are yet to happen are already happening but it's happening at the subconscious level. So when you go into the subconscious state and uh, you go deeper, you may just chance upon things preparing to happen. You see, there are stored things uh, which are past and there are things yet to happen. They are all accessible uh, within the subconscious. So uh, some, uh, due to psychological uh, aspect of our lives. Sometimes uh, it's just like we put more value on knowing tomorrow and uh, some too put more value on knowing the past. Certain things uh, he, he or she didn't know before, he wants to know, you see. So if you are poised for things which are yet to be known and then Sometimes the inclination to move in the direction of things preparing to happen, you see. All things which happen already exist in the subconscious state. Yeah. So sometimes we assess them in the dream and it comes exactly as it is. Yes. But sometimes you can you can dream about something and then maybe a couple of weeks later it's like you're living the dream. Is there prophecy in dreams? Yeah, the prophecy aspect is exactly what I'm saying. You see, uh, take this uh, kind of thing like uh, when you see a triangle, um, the point of the triangle, then it expands and you have it this way. So this is one point. I hope you see what I mean. Uh, then. So this is like the conscious mind. It is so, it's functioning at a point. So all the time it thinks of one thing and it has to move to know more things. So it's always moving to know more things. But the other side of the mind, which is the subconscious, superconscious, they are expanded and they don't need to move to know. They know. Uh, and subconscious knows. So what is yet to be known is already known. You see, but this mind, which is just a point, doesn't know. So it's active to know. 
is trying to know and that is what is bringing about the drama <laughs> you see so uh, in this way uh, if you dream when you sleep you are going towards the larger side of the triangle so more knowledge space is there to know more things so it's no more that point that small point trying to know you, uh, the things are known here already so when you go there and you get to know them you carry the information here to that point and if you are able to keep that information sometimes exactly that thing is coming to uh, pass so it becomes like prophetic wow. so we have different types of dreams we have visionary dreams uh, we have uh, even journey into the past lives some things you are seeing in your dream sometimes it's not this life mm. it has taken you to things you have experienced long time all records are kept in the subconscious it has the imprint of everything wow. past they are all there you see and yet things which are to happen are also uh, within the confines of the uh, subconscious so uh, this is how it is but dog what about when others dream about you so there's i i've had several calls and somebody says Denta, I had a dream about you. This is the second or third dream I've had. Mm -hmm. You know, you were standing amongst a group of crowd and you were speaking. You know, what happens when others are dreaming about you? What does that mean? Yeah. Actually, when the person goes into the dream state, it's just like when a person enters into meditation, deep meditation when you go into these states that is the time you are closest to others that is the time you are closest to other people because for example i'm closest to you when i'm assessing you from the subconscious you see the reason is that uh, the subconscious is not just like my subconscious and your subconscious what when you enter subconscious i enter subconscious we are in one thing it's one zone so uh, you are inside it so if i'm assessing things in the that zone it includes you and because of frequencies it may link to you everything links to its kind or frequency of the frequencies of the same kind they, they they tend to come together so that time that person is dreaming uh, the frequency has gone to corresponds to you oh. your frequency so because of that he assesses you he sees you you see so it's a frequency Even if they don't know you yeah it can happen it's frequency link frequency oh. connection okay. you see that is why uh, when people become more spiritually advanced, in other words, what I mean is when you move more into uh, the deeper into the uh, subconscious, to the superconscious, then you have connected yourself to all mankind because everyone is connected to it unknowingly would you consider daydreaming as dream as a proper dream no okay. not proper dream um, what happens I, I, I said um, we have the brain waves mm. so when you are shifting into the next state uh, the very first stage um, is not actually it's like you are still aware of the body mm. and a portion of you have just shifted but a greater part is still within the physical body so the awareness is divided so it's not 100% dreaming that is where 
sometimes things happening in the body can be taken for a dream, you see, because if at that time something is uh, biting you, uh, your physical body, you dream you are somewhere and somebody is pricking you with something. You, I mean, it's, it's, it's halfway, mm. you see, halfway. Like I mentioned before, we have different types of dreams, right? You can have a dream that you're a millionaire. Um, you can have a dream that you've had a car accident. How do we make sure that the negatives don't happen and the positives happen? Very good. Very good question. When you see such things, it means some things are going on in the subconscious and uh, it wants to happen. And you don't want it to happen. Yes, you are a spirit. Your frequency is higher than what is going on even in the subconscious because your very spirit is super. It's even beyond super conscious. Super conscious is higher than the subconscious, but we have beyond the super conscious. And that is where everything is coming from. So that part is within you. So uh, anything happening uh, within the subconscious, you have to go into the superconscious and you can nullify it because you are, you are above it. When uh, you are not functioning beyond the super, uh, subconscious, then you cannot uh, change the thing. Say you can't change it because you are not functioning at that level where you can bring change to yeah. bear. That is why when people have dreams which are like nightmares, things terrible going to happen, then sometimes you see that they, they resort to fasting, praying and all that. What, what does fasting do? It is only to change your frequency. You see, it's just to change your frequency. So, um, when your frequency is changing, if it is changing for better, I mean it's opening out, uh, then your aura shines and repels those things. The aura does two things, very important. It attracts the good things and repels the bad things. So, when you dream like this, your state may not be able to prevent or allow it to happen, but you change your frequency. If you change it, then you'll be able to bear upon the result. You can, if it is something to be stopped, then your, your aura will stop it. If it is something to be attracted, then your aura can attract it, you see. So, um, you see... So does the fasting and praying help or not? Um, if you're having nightmares Good. of being murdered or being chased or, yes. you know, just negative stuff. Yeah, fasting is uh, the only thing being thrown to the public to do. But uh, there are things that even work faster than fasting. Please, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> of course, there are several things, but uh, the... Um, already I even uh, spoke to you about breath. Yes. Yes. Breath can do so much. Wow. And um, when you can come to a state where the breath is so silent and that is almost like stopping, that moment your aura is shooting out. Shooting out. Shooting out. You see? because that is what is making you to resemble the source. The source is not involved in the activity we are doing. It's just, that's why sometimes people say the still small voice of God, because everything is so cool. Okay. Everything is. So when you come to that state, your aura begins to resemble that source. So it expands, it radiates. Mm. 
and it radiates peace, love, joy. So when these things are happening, if it is the dream that you don't want the thing to happen, it will just uh, slow it down, wow. you see. And if it is something that is good to happen, it will attract it to you, you see. So it's just a, a small thing I'm telling you, but there are other, other things, things and uh, we, we, we teach. By and by, I will be teaching you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And is it good to, you know, like we're, right now we're at Royal Senshi. Um, when you are having bad, bad dreams, to just get away sometimes. Yeah. Is it good to just leave your, your current state to go somewhere else? And do you think that that will change your dreams or be away? Maybe you're living in busy Accra and you come away to Royal Senshi. To be with nature, the beautiful wind, the greens, the trees, the river. Is it good to move away from, you know, what you're living for sometimes to have a break? Yes, yes, yes. But then one has to understand some things. You can come to the natural scenery, but then um, one has to have a technique to calm down the hormones. Otherwise, you are in the midst of nature and your mind is haywire. You can even go to the cave and enter it and your mind is at home, th thinking of this issue, that matter, that matter, that matter. You see, so you need, there is a way one has to uh, cool the, calm the hormones and when they are balanced and you go to nature you get the highest benefit of nature and that is uh, great. Um, always our lives we need to watch out for pluses and minuses. Okay. So if you come to nature it's a plus but you may be coming with so much uh, or so many minuses and uh, let's say a recent occurrence that is giving you anxiety and you carry it to that place it means you went with a minus already mm -hmm. so the plus at the place only nullifies that uh, minus but it doesn't really give you a positive thing because uh, it has to cancel out some minuses okay. you see so if one wants to really benefit very well from nature uh, he has to also know a few things Thanks. when he goes to such a place and then he can have he or she can have uh, a wonderful uh, change mm. in everything mm. i mean during our conversations you mentioned about conscious unconscious, superconscious mm. levels, mm. what do they actually mean? Mm. Yes, in a, way, in a way, conscious means aware. Okay. So, uh, a kind of awareness. You see, the, our senses, the sense, sense of sight, sense of hearing, taste, feeling, uh, these are the things that are giving us awareness. Because my eyes see you, I'm aware of your presence. My ears hear you, I'm aware of your speech, and so on. So, uh, that is awareness. But, why is it when we are praying, sometimes we close our eyes? Because we want another awareness, but not the awareness we are in right now. I'm seeing you. If I want to pray, then I close my eyes. That means I don't want the awareness coming through the senses. Mm. So all the awareness coming through the senses must be halted. Then you go into the sub, sub awareness. Sub -awareness. There too you are aware, but not aware of things through the senses. Mm. You see? So uh, that is what we call subconscious. But that also, we can go deeper and deeper into it, and then we transcend it. And that one, of course, uh, 
when you realize it before you can understand it, you see. So uh, it's sub, 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 but beyond that sub, then there is that super okay. awareness. And when you have a lucid dream, yeah. is that subconscious or conscious? That one, I already mentioned that uh, it's like a portion of awareness in the, is in the conscious okay. and a portion sure. is in the subconscious and that state is uh, lucid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Doc, you know, in, in the Bible we, we know that Daniel used to interpret dreams. Um, does it happen now? Can somebody interpret your dream for you? Um, is, that, is that something that happens? Um, yes, but I'm using but. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the great spirit, the source, when you are focused on something you really want, it flows in that direction to let it become okay. so. So if someone uh, really wants to uh, know the meaning of dreams and uh, it goes deep in that kind of request, then uh, Great Spirit, uh, it, it makes it so, so that uh, you become a channel for uh, I mean, telling the meaning of dreams, mm. you see. Whatever we focus on seriously, then the Great Spirit uh, makes it happen, okay. you see. So some people put so much importance on dreams, so much, and uh, therefore they want the meaning of it is so, uh, I mean, important, important to them. To them. Yeah. And then at some point, the Great Spirit makes it uh, assess, uh, accessible, you know. Okay. It, makes it, uh, it helps the person to be able to uh, do that. So, Doc, so whatever we put our mind to, we can achieve it? Yes, whatever. But then, when you put your mind to something very seriously, it forms a percentage of many, many things that uh, you desire. So that one may carry the highest percentage. Then the Great Spirit moves in that direction to fulfill it for you. Sometimes it's on the way to fulfill it for you and you change the focus so that something else is more important than that. And that is what is going on in people's life and they get nothing. You see, because uh, all the time uh, our focus changes. We want this very bad, seriously. But just within a short time, uh, the percentage we have given to this reduces and something else catches our mm. attention. Even a mere phone call can change our focus. Somebody we see can change our focus. And uh, when it is like that, the percentage keeps changing and then the great spirit will hold waiting for you to be focused okay. <laughs> waiting okay. for you to keep Get to back. one thing any anything that you focus on and the percentage is very very high uh, it begins to move in that direction to give it to you wow yes Dr. Jan, thank you so much mm. for this inspiring show. I've learnt that don't eat too much before you sleep. Yeah. You can do some breath.